Hey, Noah in Oregon, you, you are now on the air uh, with Matt and Jim. How are you? How's it going, Matt? Well, pretty good, except that I evidently played myself. Uh, oh, hey, yeah. Hey, hey you, you're, you're a theist, right, Noah? Well, yeah, let's... Noah, you're, you're a theist, right? But I am a skeptic now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> did you hear the last call? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Yeah, I laughed. <laughs> did, did I play myself or, or what? No, no, you didn't. No, that guy was calling for clout or something. Sweet. All right, let's get on with it. How you doing? So um, let me give you a little background on what just happened. So I became a skeptic recently because of Christianity and what it's become um, and who they've backed up. A uh, good example of that is Donald Trump, the complete antithesis of Christ. And people are lying for him and everything else. So I became a skeptic. So then I started reading the Gospels, and they, a lot of them don't line up. The stories don't line up. Um, yeah. So before I let go of God, though, I wanted, to, I wanted to discuss this with you. Dr. David Block was an astrophysicist um, that said that the Big Bang Theory, the contingencies that had to have taken place in the exact picoseconds were such precision when the Big Bang happened, that it would be like hitting a 12 by 12 foot square block from 48 billion light years away, bullseye. Now, so, uh, to measure that, the chances of that happening um, would be far more than you winning the Mega Millions, uh, correct? Like happening to where there's life form on So Earth. what? Because we have the perfect amount. Hey, hey, let me ask you, Noah. What are the odds that a god did it? Go ahead. What are the odds that a God did it? <clears throat> That's a good question. And so you're right. Hang on, hang on. Don't just say it. Don't just say it's a good question. Do you have an answer? Do I have an answer that God did it? No. Do you have Do you have an answer of what are the odds that a God did it? Um. I really don't, but I would say the chances of it okay. happening by chance versus... Oh, so now you're going to make shit up, all right? So when you say you became a skeptic, I'll take you at your word, but here's the thing. Yes. It doesn't matter how unlikely how unlikely Dr. David Block thinks something is. How do you know that the, your, the odds that he presented, how do you know that those odds are less than the odds that a god did it? If you don't know the odds that a God did it, you have no way to compare. And so you could say, let's say that the odds of a universe was one in a hundred, but the odds of a God were one in a million. So then the uh, the odds of this or physical origin of the universe is one in a hundred, then the God is one in a million. Then that's clearly the natural one bears out. But if it turns out that the odds of a physical explanation for the universe was one in a million and the odds for a God was one in a hundred, then the God thing would win out. But if you don't know what the odds for God are, how can you talk about how how incredibly unlikely the alternative is. Um, well, okay, so let me discuss it. So I'm, I'm a big believer in science, just like you. I watch your shows. I'm a big fan. Um, so it's, it's, it gets deep because I look back at the origin of the universe and, and how we have life form here and how perfect our, our Earth is from the sun and the moon. The Earth isn't perfect, and none of those things are actually true. There's no such thing as precision. Well, this is the only place we know there's life, correct? So what? It's so the, far, and so what? Yeah. So, so you, what you're saying is the one planet in our solar system that we have access to that is at the right right distance and right features to provide to to support life like us is the only life we know about. Well, big fucking deal. That's nothing. Uh, yeah, I guess that's a good point. Well, and here's, here's the other question that I have for you. So when he calculated these odds, the way you calculate odds is you take the number of possible occurrences versus the, the number of occurrences you're going to draw, for instance, if you're, you're doing the odds for uh, cards, right? So 54 cards, you're going to draw five. That's how you determine the odds. So when you determine these odds, what universe, how many different universes does, do you know exist that you can compute those odds from? I guess that's a good point. I'm only it's one. The answer is one. We have exactly one universe. There's only one universe that we know of. That's why it was called universe. We have nothing else to compare it to. 
And that means that everything else is hypothetical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got it confused with solar system. Okay. Yeah. There's one universe. Correct. Um, So yeah, no, I've become a skeptic. And the biggest thing I've had with letting go of God and the existence of God is that very reason is uh, what What explains uh, how everything was laid out here. Okay. This is easy. The gospels don't line up. The, I get it. The Gospels are irrelevant because whether Christianity is bullshit, whether or not there is a God, uh, and even whether or not it happens to be the Christian God, the, the Gospel message. Set all that aside. You you said that the last thing keeping you hanging on to God is somebody calculated the odds of the universe happening by natural causes, and that seems really unlikely to you. Well, tough shit. Because you don't know if it's more or less unlikely than a God. And so if the only thing is keeping you believing in God is that nobody has been able to disprove God, well, that's a bad reason because the God proposition is unfalsifiable. It, it could be the case that nobody could ever disprove God. And at no point does that mean that it's reasonable to believe there is a God. Just be, Because now you're making what is called the argument from ignorance fallacy, or essentially the argument from personal incredulity, that you are justified in believing it until somebody proves you wrong. And that's not the way the burden of proof works. Somebody's got to prove God. That's true. No. I am believing it. I am believing in it because it makes more sense to me, but that doesn't mean it's correct. So you have a good point. Um, but that's a, that, that, that well, is. Well, let me try something else. So let's take a deck of cards, right? Obviously. The odds of hitting a royal flush are one in 650,000, roughly. But that's also the odds of hitting any one particular uh, hand. And if I said that the odds of hitting a. Four of clubs, five of hearts, six of clubs, seven of clubs, ace of clubs was one in 650,000. What are the odds of me drawing that, that hand right now? It's 100% because that's the hand I just drew, right? Because that's the actual thing that I just did. Right. So whatever the odds against it were, the fact is, is that the odds of me drawing that hand were 100% because that's what I drew. So, you know, the odds could be against something, and just because the odds are against something doesn't mean it's not going to happen. And when we look at the number of worlds and planets out there that are within the Goldilocks zone that, that are the right size and everything else, for life as we know it, then we there are millions of, of opportunities out there for something to happen. And that's a problem, maybe even billions, depending on, on which study you look at. So, the, you know, just because we haven't seen life anywhere else, well, that's a function of the fact that things only move at the speed of light. And so and our ability to detect things depends on how far away they are and, and what the strength of the signal coming in is. So, again, you keep coming up against these odds and we keep coming up with these, you know, fairly easy to research and easy to figure out responses to everything that, that, that you're saying. So I don't understand why. Is it, this is a great example from Jim that I love. And I'll, I'll because I always have a deck of cards handy, uh, I'll do this and maybe it'll make it clear. There is five cards and there are five cards. Which one of those two hands is more likely from a shuffled deck? Uh, they're even. What? They are. They are absolutely equal opportunity. The equal odds of happening. Yes. That is counterintuitive to a lot of people because most people will look at the ace through five of a spades hand and say, "Wow, that's awesome!" But that's because we put significance on it. They're just bits of cardboard. They don't know anything about the hands in poker games and other stuff. But yes, you got it right. They're exactly as likely. Yeah, they're exactly likely. That's correct. Sure. So now I mean, uh, what what you're doing though is you're say suggesting you're suggesting that if we turn those two hands around backwards and somebody says the odds of this hand is one in five hundred and seventy three million, that seems so unlikely that you're gonna choose the other one. That's what you're doing. Actually, Matt, so you're saying you're saying that the the odds because like I said, it's the odds of the universe being created and how perfect it was can be the same odds as proving God. So you can, no, we're, we're also asking you, how did you determine those odds? Right. Because yeah, in order to determine do. odds, right. You need to know how many permutations there are and a deck of cards are 54 permutations. So the odds of drawing any one particular card are one in 54. But when we start doing them in combinations, those odds start going up. The problem is that we we don't have any way of knowing how many other possible universes there are. So you can't calculate those odds. It's impossible. But in any case, even if you could. That's true. 
<laughs> you, you've already acknowledged that you can't calculate the odds of God. So you have no, no way to, to compare them. It would be like, let me take two hands of cards that you can't see, put them behind my back and say, okay, in one hand, I have five cards and another hand, I have five cards. Uh, which one was more likely? It's like, how do you detect cheating? Yeah, the only reason we can detect cheating yeah, yeah. is because we have statistics to show what is likely in any given situation. Yeah, so I guess I guess what I'm I guess what I'm believing in is the a thing that makes more sense to me, but it's not really uh, scientifically speaking more probable to so, one else just because it makes more sense to me. So you need to ask yourself, why does that make more sense to you? Because if it turns out that you don't have a good reason and it makes more sense to you, then you have undercovered a flaw in your thinking and that needs to be expunged. Yeah, correct. Especially after seeing what we've seen with the Christianity and Donald Trump and everything else, I couldn't believe it. Uh, that's that's right. not relevant. Yeah. I, I would I have no interest in the uh, Donald Trump and Christianity conversation. <laughs> but <laughs> No, neither do I. On that note, we got to get on to some other calls. I appreciate it, Noah. Thanks for calling. Yeah, you guys have a good one. You too. You too.